Oh boy, Polarium's done it again. Stu is here talking about Tormund the Cold. So I thought this was pretty newsworthy because not everybody goes on to Discord and reads everything that happens on Discord. A lot of people probably don't even use Discord. The hardcore player base and everybody that I talk to, of course, they all use Discord. So they know, they've seen all the stuff that is happening in the Polarium official Discord about Tormund the Cold. There's a lot of unhappy people because this guy is so powerful and they're talking about changing him already. And that's fine. We've had this, I mean, this is the same old song and dance with this company. They bring out a champion that's either underperforming and now this time overperforming as if nothing was ever tested or they just don't have a clue about what's going on with turn-based games or their own game. So we've seen this time and time again. Nothing new, but what are we going to do about it? They opened up a thread on Discord to ask people to come there and tell them what you think about it all, which is pretty funny because there's going to be a lot of people who don't even, a lot of people who never even have this guy are going to complain and say, don't, don't nerf. Games need nerfing. There's games out there that nerf all the time because balance is super important. So recently too, we'll get back to this in just a second. Recently, I came out with a YouTube video about top five nerfs that need to happen now. And if people have these champions, of course, they're going to disagree. They're almost 9,000 views. We got 136 dislikes, which is fine. Dislikes are good too on the video. Honestly, dislikes are good as well. It's always good to have both, not a problem. But if you read through it and, and look at the comments, people who have those champions don't want, they, they never want their champions balanced. They never do. But when it comes to something like this, it's even funnier because a lot of these people who are making these comments will never even be able to fuse Torm in the cold and don't even have him or play him his passive is just so strong right his passive is so strong that he has a 30 percent chance with fearsome presence to freeze you if you do three different things turn meter heal or get a buff now he's not working the best right now as well on top of all that he's so powerful with this he's not functioning optimally and he's getting around a lot of things which is pretty cool there's nothing wrong with that but the thing is he can freeze you on each of these so if you do all three on one champion at one time, he's got you have three different chimes to be frozen for a 30% chance. Now, a skill one already has a really high percentage chance to freeze you, 30% with Fearsome Presence. Go over here to Masteries. Same Masteries I had when I did my Tormund review. Fearsome Presence adds a 5% additional to freeze you. And then I've got all his other all his other Masteries here. What was really funny is when he dies too, he gets a chance to come back to life. So if you get a chance to come back to life, you have a 50% chance to remove one random debuff when you lose 25% HP. So we'll see him pop out of that. We'll see him lose 25% HP often, dive, get frozen. That's what happens when he freezes with his passive. Come back to life, drop this immediately, and then counterattack because he lost life as well or somebody else got frozen or whatever happened. But this all happens first. Then he comes back and counterattacks with his AOE skill one, which is really strong. It's just funny. He's a, he's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. And you know they, had to, they, had to, they brought Mountain King out. They had to buff Mountain King twice. They bring... They bring Hegemon out. Hegemon is not balanced properly at all. Hegemon should only lock out the skill for one turn max. They should make it so that these things like this uh, skill right here can't even affect lockout. That's that's for sure. They should do that, and they should only make it one turn max. And really, they should get rid of it and replace it by something else. I talk about that. I talk about all that in this video here. If you want to go check it out on five things top five nerfs needed now. So you can go check that out in that video if you want to. A lot of people already have. You'll be able to see all my thoughts on all the different champions out there that are very strong right now. And as you know, when I talk about them, I say that further testing is needed. I say that Polarium has the, the capability and the multipliers to be able to go test these champions. So go ahead and check that if you want to. Let's get back into Tormund and what people are talking about and how they are talking about him on Discord. So right here, we have somebody talking about, my opinion is listen to your paying customers I've spent $300 to unlock Tormund, and I'll quit the game if you nerf him. So buff other champions instead. I hear that a lot, buff champions. I've been saying buff champions since I started playing this game. Since I started doing YouTube, I've been saying buff champions. If you look at how I would run Polarium video, I've got a video, we could jump over to it, that says, how I, what would you do if you ran Polarium, or what would I do if I ran Polarium? I don't remember where it's at. If you go over here and you, you look at all uploads, you can scroll down, or you can use this little search feature right here and search that in. And you'll be able to see the one where I talked about what I would do if I ran Polarium. And what I would do immediately, first thing I would do is balance 50% of the champions out there within probably a month to two months. And I mean 50%. I'm talking all of them. I would definitely make sure all the, the undesirable legendaries were buffed up. But then also, while doing those buffs, I would also nerf. 
I would buff everybody up, and then I would do slight small tweaks on nerfs. They wouldn't affect that champion that much. And if it's something like Torment the Cold, if you're going to go ahead and reduce his capability of doing anything with his passive, then go ahead and make this skill a 100% chance to provoke. There's no reason why this Void Legendary, just Legendary, it doesn't matter if they're Void. They're already good if they're Void. So it doesn't matter if it's a Void Legendary, but if he's a Legendary, he should have a higher than an 80% chance to provoke on this skill because we're taking away his passive ability to do a lot of things. So we're, we're definitely dropping it down a lot because the rest of his abilities, I mean, this one's the 30% chance is pretty good. That's pretty good. They could even lower this down another 5% and it wouldn't be bad at all. It really wouldn't be bad. But if we're going to go ahead, you know, do things slowly, that's always the thing. You can always come back and nerf. I mean, if your company is constantly doing buffs and, and reworks, then it's not a problem. You do it slowly. And if it wasn't enough, next month you come back and you do 5% more. No big deal. If you did it too much, next time you come back and do 5% more. But as you know, with Polarium, we never know when we're going to get buffs or, or improvements or anything like that. And when they do come out, they're terrible like Sathalia. What a joke Sathalia turned out to be. <laughs> it's just crazy. So, of course, we're going to have people in here crying that they're going to get the refund, which, of course, is going to get your account banned. If you're Apple, probably not. It just depends. I remember back in the day, Apple doesn't you know notify these people what you do. But people are going to get refunds. Sure, that's going to happen. It doesn't matter. That, that should never make a company scared to do balances because companies real companies do it all the time they're not afraid to make their game great by doing balances but also let's go on the other flip side they should have never released a champion like this i mean this is this is i mean this, this company everything they do everything that happens I, I don't get it but they should never have done that it's one person says leave him alone i'm in gold for trying to get my platinum and i have found him numerous times and he has never seemed to be an issue for me. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. Right. So sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. He might not be an issue for some players. And we really haven't had time. You know, enough of the player base really hasn't had time to get a hold of him and play him. I thought he was going to be nerfed a little bit. But I thought with the Christmas and the, and the New Year's holiday that this would happen probably in January, late January or in February. Because they're going to need to come back. They're going to, they're going to need to get things done. I personally don't think we're going to have a new update until February. I think they're still far behind what they need to be doing. And we're not going to see anything because the last update was terrible. The 1.12, we've already talked about that many times in rant videos. About how all we got was the nightmare campaign and the bad bad tweaks to Sithali and whoever else they did for champions. But when you read through all this stuff here, you just go down, go to, go to Tormund and read through the information. <laughs> you can see... People talking about it. Now, I put a comment in here. I don't remember where it was, but I said, oh, that's me right here. If you nerf him, can you can you get 100% provoke on his A3 instead of 8%? So that's all I wanted was if, look, if you're going to nerf the guy down, at least let me do an AoE provoke along with some of his other abilities that he has. Okay, the absolute joke, try and nerf a champion so new, not to mention the fusion is going on right. So then that's another thing, right? And that's what I was just talking about, that enough people haven't really had a chance to get him yet. So whatever they do, yes, they should make it minor. I've made a video on what they should, how how I feel they should do it, and it would be a it would be a change, but it, it's it's a needed change. It really is. I think it's I think it's a pretty needed change up in top tier arena, and in any kind of arena. I mean, if you play him and you fight against people who do all those things, it's pretty RNG. You get a lot of freezes out there, and I have really high accuracy on mine, so high resist isn't going to help you. It's just I don't know. It's one of those things. <laughs> where it's kind of crazy, but it should have never happened. It should have never taken place. Leave him alone. The speed meta in PvP was overpowered anyways. Forced people to be creative and unique in battles. Now, the speed meta was never really overpowered. It's like this in any game you play. Any game you play, speed is super powerful. And actually, what was kind of funny is about the, the, the Platinum Arena meta wasn't even flushed out yet. We just got Platinum Arena. We were just seeing the top teams. And the top teams were split into high resistance, bruiser teams, and speed teams, which is the same for any game I played. Any game I played, you have the super speed teams and you have the bruiser teams, which outlast and do, they don't do crazy amount of damage. They do damage, but they slowly do damage and they outlast the, the, the opponent. Now, I'll tell you, I you know, I won, I won arena number one place, right? And I've been up there in the top arena. 
pretty much any defense is not safe. If you have a robust roster, if you're in game, if you're if you have tons of artifacts, if you have options, no defense is safe. It's not that difficult to beat a defense. Now, are there some really good defense out there and strong ones? Yeah, it's because those people have amazing champions and they have amazing artifacts and a super great decked out finished great haul and everything else. So they're going to be strong. But you, if, if, if you take an even par, if I have the same artifacts as you, if we have the same champions, if we have the we have access to a whole entire roster, every champion out there, level 60, all maxed out, we all have the same artifacts, the same strength artifacts, and same speed and everything else, we both can always beat the defense. It's not like some magic thing to where you got to be some genie and you're some major league gamer and, oh, wow, mom, look at me. I know how to beat people. It's not like that. It's just trial and error. You just look at the artifacts of what they do, what the champions do. It's not that difficult. You can beat. That's why That's why you never see somebody on like number one place and just stay there forever. But in this game, you actually do. So that's a whole different issue about people not being able to see you when, once you get into top tier arena. Because I'm sitting there right now with a level one champion and I just lost 20 in a row on purpose on my own tokens to try to drop down so a whole bunch of people can see me. Because nobody could see me before and I would just sit there and never be attacked. Whole different issue. Anyways, Torm in the cold. So what can we do with him? I'm, ba I'm basically just here to talk to you about, you know, He's going to be nerfed soon, I guess. I don't know. Polarium's going to look back through all this stuff and read through all these comments. It goes pretty pretty deep, I would guess. It only started back, well, we're at 158 new messages. It started back a long time ago. People are typing in it like crazy. Now we've got memes coming out. The nerf is coming. <laughs> like Winter is coming all at once in one weekend. So who knows? It's not going to happen this weekend, I don't think. If it happens today or tomorrow, I'd be really surprised. I'd be surprised if they went in and did that. And if they do, here's my gripe. Why can't we get other champions taken care of? They just did A3 on Pumpkin Jack to make him always do that in AI. And we want Madam Sirius. We want her to be able to do her A3 on auto as well. But now we got to wait till the next patch. Why? Why, was, why can't this stuff be done now? Why can't we take care of the champions we have Right now, if we can go in and cause so much trouble over this one champion and they're going to go in there and tweak him, then they can tweak other champions. They can, they can go in there and do something for us with this game. Make the game good. It's just, I don't know. It, it's really wild. Someone who doesn't have Torment and most likely won't get him, but I'm against the nerf. See, I think there's a lot of people out there like this that don't have him, won't have him. And I really respect this person for saying that they don't have him and probably won't have him. And then they give their honest opinion of why they think that this, probably this person shouldn't be nerfed. And that's really good. That's respectable. I like that. I haven't read through this whole thing. I really haven't read through all of them, but there's a lot here. So let me know. What do you think is going to happen? What is your viewpoint on a company bringing out a champion and then having to revise it right away, like with Mountain King, the rest of them that they've done, this one? <laughs> I mean, how do you feel about this company and how they do things? All their stuff. It's pretty pretty wild if you have torment if you play arena let me know how you feel about the arena about the speed meta about everything else like i said the speed meta and the bruiser meta and whatever else high resistance or immunity runes it was still being flushed out before we got this guy i don't think this guy was necessary to come out right now i don't mind it at all shake things up you can always shake things up just do it in a better way you know do some testing we need testing testing always needs to be done so that is it that's all i've got